Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle at Ed House and today I am going to use up the paints that I used for the tissue box. If you haven't seen the tissue box then check back in at the end of the video there will be a link to my acrylic pour NZ playlist and there's three videos in there where I paint a tissue box cover and um, I've got heaps of the colour left and they're not colours that I would generally use normally so what I thought I would do is do a pour with these colours so we've got a a green and that one oh, I'm gonna really push my brain here this is grass green and then I think I added some burnt sienna maybe I just added some of this which is burnt sienna and white uh, I'm not 100% sure Anyway, I'm going to use those. I'm going to use my, uh, this is my house paint. So for those of you that are new to my series, I use um, spring indoor outdoor house paint from Bunnings here in New Zealand or Australia. Uh, and... The cool thing about using house paint is it's a lot cheaper than using oh my goodness me that was interesting it was a lot cheaper than using artist quality paint especially when you're doing large quantity type pours and um, this one isn't quite such a large quantity it's much better um, but I don't have any of my other white mixed up because I used it in a aforementioned box and I haven't mixed any more. So what I've got here is a record and what records are great for, they've got a hole in the middle and you can make them into clocks really, really easily. So I thought, well, why not use that paint if mum likes the colour scheme? She can have a clock to match. How does it get any better than that? So... What I'm stalling time till I find is my tape, and I can't seem to find it. Where, oh, where did my tape go? Really? What's right about that? I'm not getting. There it is. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Got it. Yay! Okay. Ask a question. Things show up. Why did I want tape? Flip it over and cover up the hole. Why do we do that? So that we don't lose all our paint down the down the hole. <laughs> and as you can see, I have painted over the uh, what's that thing called? Label with uh, just plain Mars black, not mixed with anything, just straight out of the tube. And it's been sitting there for about a week. I'm um, just looking at how it's reacted to that splash. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But normally what I do is I paint them and leave them for a good couple of weeks. And uh, what that does is it seals in any colour into the label. Of the label. So that it doesn't weep through into the paint. So cross fingers because I don't really want a yellow circle in the middle of my painting. So... So, so, suck your tool. And if you can, celebrate. Because you're a lot more flexible than me. Anyway. <laughs> Both of these colours, I believe, have silicon in them. That's what showed up when I torched the box in the last video. So, that from memory, I put silicon in both of those. And I'm just going to put some white in here first. Then I'm going to put some green just through like that 
Then I'm going to put some brown through like that. It's interesting how burnt sienna goes quite pink when you add white to it like that. Look how pink that is. And when you think that that has come from that colour, it's quite a red brown burnt sienna. So let's just. I've put this into a, um, a pouring pot, so I'm not quite sure what I'm planning to do with this. This is one of those paint paintings where you kind of go, "Eeny, meeny, macaroni, what shall I do?" And then you just keep pouring until the pot's so full you don't know what you're doing. So I'm actually going to pour this green out just to use it all up. And some of you are going, what a waste of paint, you don't need all that paint. Probably not. So, because I know I'm going to have a lot of paint run off here, I'm going to grab one of my bits of cardboard. And for those of you that haven't watched me before, I use the inside of my cereal boxes to catch my paint and make cards out of. So there'll be a link in the description below to the video about how I make cards. Now, what would I like this to look like? The box itself is kind of marbly, isn't it? So maybe I'll just do lines. Lines. Do you like lines? I like lines. Let's just Okay, it's running off the side already. Let's just ask it to run backwards and forwards a bit. And then you can see the silicon is starting to come up already. If you can't, let's zoom you in. So we've got a big cell there. We've got some other cells happening over here we've got some cool stuff happening yeah. oh i can't do that come on yeah. down here so while that is sitting i'm gonna torch it and see what else is in there i know that there's definitely air bubbles i can see those pop the air bubbles and just slightly warm the paint and by just slightly warming the paint what we're doing is making it easier for the silicon which is an oil to rise to the top on this water-based paint now I'm not touching the flame to the paint. I'm not staying in any one spot long enough to cook the paint. Just warming it. Blowing it, warming it and allowing it to come on up. <laughs> a bit like a game show. Silicon, come on down! But we want you to come on up actually. Just going to put that little bit of paint that's left in the pot in here because it's a lot easier for paint to flow on paint does that make sense so I'm just going to tilt it towards my cardboard so that it, if anything falls off Okay. 
sometimes I like to use my finger and just fill in the gaps just so we don't lose some of those cool cells. And again, just filling in those gaps, letting the paint glide down, filling in the gaps. Sometimes you've got to let the paint come back to the middle, otherwise you start to distort the shape of the cells. There she goes, just about done. Now, I'm not overly excited about these big green patches. So I'm just kind of blending trying to make it a little less harsh line-ish I could get my um, what's that thing called straw and blow the edges but it's actually not what I'm after. See how that has just broken up that level of harsh line without creating anything too harsh. I hope you guys could see that because now one of the things I have seen happen with records I highly recommend you keep a close eye on it if you are painting a record is just make sure that that paint goes all the way to the edge and over I like that gentle subtle pretty I'm seeing some more air bubbles in there though, so let's torch it again and then I'll get you down and show you up close. You see how I'm moving, oh. moving my hand all the time. Few more little cells coming up so by pull, um, by doing the torch initially created cells and then as we tilt it around those cells grew and that's how we've got all these big cells and then come back in afterwards and just add a few more cells here and there or if you only want little cells don't torch to start with stretch your paint then torch and just get little cells. I 
I'm liking it. Liking it a lot. How does it get better than this? I do like it a lot. So let me get you down and show you what I'm seeing. Because I'm seeing it a little bit closer than you are. Okay. So, I'm liking the size of some of these cells. If you haven't been able to get a sense of the size, um, this is a 12 inch record. Alright, 12 inch LP. Now, this sort of like pinky colour will dry darker when it comes to it going by the colour which the box dried I'm liking it it's oh look at that that's a cool cell that is so pretty looks like a Q what else does it look like Now see how these ones are kind of a bit jaggedy looking? That's from booing move backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards and round and about. <laughs> but I like it. And these are some of those cells that came up in that final one. Look how small they are. This bit over here is quite funky. Check it out. like some sort of alien blob so I'm liking it I'm liking it a lot and uh, I wonder if we can work out exactly where the center is I think the center is in the middle of that green patch I think so I'm gonna let this dry but before we do anything else, we didn't get a lot of paint come off the sides. But let's have a look at what we did get. I'm just going to pop that to lean up there and drain. This looked really good before I put my finger in it. But once I put some heat on it, get some cells happening. That's going to make a fabulous cabochon. And what else have we got through here? Hmm. I might pop you back up on the stand and have a play with that. I don't want to play too much because we don't want to be blend it too much. All right, I will be right back. Okay, so first things first, we are going to deal with this one because it is pretty. Uh, what shape and size should we use for it though? I think I'm going to go for a square. I do, I do, I do. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. If you don't like my singing, then mute me. Because I like to sing. It's fun for me. Where's my square? See there. Now, some of you are thinking, what is she doing? This is called a cabochon. It is round on the top and flat on the back. That is what defines a cabochon shape. Often um, you'll find that gems are cut cabochon shaped. So today we're making our own gem. <laughs> How's it getting any better than that? So very important is that we clean it. And just check for any imperfections. And I'm seeing, can't, let me see if I can get it in focus for you. There is a dot. 
in the middle of this. And it doesn't seem to want to come off. So I'm going to get another one. Oh, I like that. That's kind of cool. That is kind of, kind of very cool. Hmm. The question is, is it big enough? For an oval. What I've found is, oh crikey, if you, if you have something that's not quite big enough, you can push down into the paint, it does smush the paint and cover the back of it, cover the rest of it up, and sometimes it doesn't really do good things to it. So... Let's have a go. Let's have a look at what that created. I think we caught it. Let's let it dry and see how it comes out. And let's see if we get some cells out of that. Oh, so often that happens. You do a smush. Then you heat what's underneath and you get some pretty stuff happening. All right. <clears throat> Let's polish another one. Polish, not Polish. <laughs> okay, I'm going in. Now, because this is acrylic paint, because this is a impermeable glass surface, this is not a permanent bond. It does dry, it does stay there, but if you want to do anything that's going to have any moisture or any scratching or anything on the back of it, you do need to do some form of sealing. Um, I have a video somewhere in my channel where I resined the back of cabochons and uh, there's a few hints, hints and tips in there if you're going to do that. But I like that one. It's probably my favourite of the three. So let's leave those all to dry. We've got three cabochons and two and a painting. Big record. And uh, I'll be back to show you the finished result in three, two, one. All right, so it's dried. My apologies for the break in the videos. I have been laid up in bed with the flu and I didn't think you wanted to listen to me sniffling and snorting and blowing my nose all the way through this very short ending to a video. Um, I'm really really pleased with it uh, as you can see the green has dried a lot shinier than the brown and the white uh, but you know once you put a gloss varnish on that it will all be all be the same so how does it get any better than that um, I keep looking at this little flick fleck here and it's been there actually since I first poured it. It's not a bug spot or anything. Um, so I have no idea what it was. But maybe that's the marking as to which way around the clock should go. And that should be the 12 o'clock marking. <laughs> maybe. Who knows. But I'm really pleased I did the little drags through those green parts. I think if they were still big solid green masses that would be really intense and far too in your face uh, so yeah i like it 
it's it's cool um, it, it's definitely dried with a lot of texture I don't know if you can see see that in let's see if we can say so, see you can see the texturing um, it really does give it that sense of a, a riverbed kind of feeling although it's not really the colors of a riverbed is it um, so but as it is I like it I like it a lot so I will see if my mother likes it and wants to own it and we'll go from there so let's what what else did we create in that pour um, we created some cabochons so let's just bring those up so that you can see them look at that subtle yet beautiful I like that one it's pretty I haven't scraped the edges of these uh, this one's extremely subtle it's almost almost disappeared but it is definitely there and last but not least is this one which it's got something about it it's it's still got the something that had me grab that spot it's not what i consider pretty <laughs> um but it is it's got something about it and i haven't quite put my finger what it is but i like it oh this looks like a figure face up here hair blowing green hair blowing in the wind white shoulders with a low cut top and hips obviously a female um, and now that I see that I can almost see another head in this piece here uh, with a flat chest so hmm it could be all sorts of things you know loving from a distance divided by blah 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 you could pull all sorts of stuff out of that interesting how does it get any better than that so there you go guys i've got three beautiful little cabochons these will be available for sale and then i've got the the clock face um I will see if my mother likes it. If not, I will make it available for sale. Let me know in the comments what colour hands you would put on this coloured clock. Um, it has almost a pinky tone to the brown. And very much uh, the in an avocado green. Um, I think the colours in the video right now are depicting it quite nicely so how does it get better than that what what color hands would you put on this clock and uh, how much more fun can we have thank you so much for joining me um, hopefully I will be well enough to start doing some paintings tomorrow uh, but there will be a bit more of a break before uh, they get put out due to needing to dry before we can do the end result thing so um if you want to find out when i'm going live next please check out this url mickeyart.co.nz forward slash sign up where you can sign up to receive my emails they just give you 24 hours notice of what's coming up in um if I'm going to be going live or not and that sort of stuff so they're not spammy I don't do anything like that it's not fun for me <laughs> um, so if you are playing with acrylic pouring just starting out having lots of fun with it please come and join us in the acrylic pouring for fun Facebook group um, 
there are lots and lots of amazing people in there and um, now that I have a assistant moderator um, keeps a lot of that yuck stuff out which is great I wish I didn't need that I wish we could all everyone could be a contribution but there are some people that choose not to be unfortunately how does it get better than that what would it take for that to change and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are putting in there and sharing and kindness and caring and um, what else is possible I adore you all bye bye